This is a screencast of SafetyBase Pro by Seawood Electronic. SafetyBase Pro is an application used to control a Claire Howe unit remotely. An easy to use interface allows test sequences to be created and performed and the test results to be safe to file. Run the setup program you received on your disk and follow the instructions. Once installed, run SafetyBase Pro. The first time you run SafetyBase Pro, you will be shown the initial configuration wizard. Choose a password for the engineer. The engineer is the name of the user that can set up test sequences. Now choose a directory where the test sequences will be saved. For this, I will create a directory inside my documents and use that. Once complete, you are shown the login screen. This is the screen you are shown every time you run the SafetyBase Pro. The login screen comprises a user list, a list of test sequences and the password field. At the moment we have not created users or test sequences, so we select the engineer, a new test sequence and enter the engineer password we chose in the wizard. Because we have logged in as the engineer, SafetyBase Pro starts up in engineer mode. The engineer mode allows you to create and edit test sequences. The screen is split into two main parts. On the left is the list of tests in the test sequences and on the right is shown the settings for a selected test. Let's go ahead and create some tests now. Click the green plus button in the toolbar or select add test from the menu. Now select the test to view the test settings on the right. We can choose the particular type of test from the drop down box here. Let's choose an insulation resistance test. The settings specific to the insulation resistance test are shown underneath the general test settings. If we add another test, notice that the new test is added before the currently selected test. To append a test to the end of the test sequence, deselect all tests first by clicking outside the list and then add a test. Let's now select a valid test type for our new tests. We'll choose a high pot test and an earth bond test. Normally we would change the settings of the tests but for now we will accept the default values. We haven't saved the test sequence yet so let's do that now. Because this is a new test we are prompted for a name. Notice that the directory we chose in the wizard is shown by default. We may save to any directory, but by choosing to save in this one, we make the test sequence available in the login screen. In engineer mode, you perform a test by ensuring it's selected and clicking on the start test button. We are currently not connected to the HAL, so we are shown a connection screen. First, ensure that the HAL is connected to a COM port and that it is in remote mode. Then select the COM port from the drop down list and choose a board rate. Click the connect button. If the HAL connects successfully then the connection screen disappears and the test starts. We have not selected any start conditions in the test settings and because we have the GAR switch down the test starts immediately. Notice how the tab changes to the Perform Test tab and output meters are shown similar to those shown on the HAL screen, giving us feedback of test result values. During the test we may abort using the Cancel Test button. A message is shown telling us that we have aborted. Another message asks us if we wish to continue testing. If there are other tests queued then these may also be cancelled. Note that tests may also be aborted by pressing the red button on the HAL. No results are saved during a test in engineer mode. It serves just as a means of experimenting with test settings. Before we examine more advanced features of engineer mode, let's take a look at operator mode. To do so, first we must create an operator. Click the operators button from the toolbar. Click Create User and enter a username and password. The new operator appears in the list. Note that we can only create and delete operators. The engineer user is fixed. 
click the OK button for our user changes to be saved. Now we are ready to log out. Now we have created an operator and a test sequence, we can log in in operator mode. Select the operator, test sequence and enter the password. Operator mode is similar to engineer mode except we have far fewer features. We still have the test sequence on the left and on the right we have the details of the test which shows the test results as they come in. We have three main options, quit, log out and test appliance. We want to test some appliances so we click the test appliance button. Before we may start the tests we must enter the serial number of the product we are testing so that we may identify it later in the test results. Either enter a serial number or scan in a serial number with a barcode scanner if one is connected to your HAL. The highlighted test on the left shows which test is being performed while on the right we show metrics of the test results coming in. Once all the tests are complete a window pops up indicating the overall status of all the tests. We can now choose to repeat the test if we wish to, add comments to the results or view the results. However in a production environment if all tests have passed the most likely step is to test another appliance. Enter another serial once the next appliance is ready to test. Let's add some comments this time. Comments may be added using the keyboard or a barcode scanner. Let's view the results now. Click the view results button. Results are saved in XML file format. The safety base results viewer is used to view results in a more user friendly manner. The results viewer shows three panels. On the left is a tree view that shows the hierarchy of elements that makes up the XML file. The top element of the tree is the name of the file and also represents the root element of the document. We'll see later how the name of the file is constructed. On the right we have a table of attributes. At the moment the attributes associated with the root element are shown as that is what is highlighted in the tree. Changing the selected element in the tree shows the attributes associated with that element. For example, selecting the appliance element shows the attributes associated with that. Inline data is viewed in the bottom right panel. For example, the data in the comments element is shown in here. The test results are stored as test set elements. Each test set is made up of a test element and any number of test results. The test element contains all the settings for the test as specified in the engineer mode and saved in a test sequence. There may be zero or many test result elements in a test set. If there are no test results then this indicates that a particular test was not performed at all. This will happen when all tests are cancelled. If tests are not cancelled then there will be as many test results as specified in the test settings. We may open files by clicking on the add files or add folder buttons. Add folder will add all XML files from that folder. Any files that are already added are not added again. Safety Base Results Viewer has a basic search facility. You can search by serial number, by date and time and by test result status. For example, to search for a serial number enter the serial number and click find next. Notice how the selection is moved to the appliance element. We may use an asterisk as a wildcard character if we wish.
Safety Base Results Viewer allows you to export your opened XML files into CSV format so it may be viewed in a spreadsheet application. To export to CSV, either select the files you want to export or clear the selection completely to export all files. Choose the name for the file and click Save. The file is created and the default application associated with CSV format is used to open the file. In this section we explain how the file names and paths are created and how you can choose where your files are stored and how they are named. Log in in engineer mode. Click on the global settings button. This will show you the global settings window. This is where we can change the test sequences directory that we specified in the initial configuration wizard and the file path for the results files. Remember that the test sequences directory exposes any test sequence files with the SEQ extension to users in the login screen. Any test sequence files not in this directory will not be shown in the login screen. You may select a new directory by clicking the browse button or simply enter a directory into the edit box. So long as the directory is a valid format then any directories will be created if they don't already exist. The results path uses markers that are replaced by values depending on the state of the application. This gives you the freedom to order results files in a directory structure of your choice with a name that makes sense in your organization. Markers are available for the test sequence name, the operator, date, time and test result. The markers may be used in any order in the path any number of times as either part of the file name or a directory name. Any directories that do not exist are created automatically. Custom messages can be set up to be displayed at key stages throughout a test. Messages consist of text, an image or both. Let's create a custom message now by clicking the Add button. This is the form for configuring a message associated with a test. Message type indicates whether the message is shown in a pop-up box. We'll leave this unchecked for the moment. The condition drop-down determines when the message is shown. When there's no test, before or during a test, or after a test passes, fails or is aborted. Let's stick with the no test condition. This is where we enter the text of the message. The final section is where we can specify an image. We'll leave this empty for now, but come back to it later. Click OK to accept our changes. Our first message appears in the list. Now select the Perform Test tab to see our message. We can see our message below the test name. We set the message condition to No Test, and as that is our current condition, we see our message. If we start a test, the condition changes and the message disappears. Let's add some more messages with other conditions to see how they work. Go back to the Custom Messages tab. Add a message and this time set the condition to Before Test and add some text. Click OK and add another test for the During Test condition. Also add one for the Test Passed condition. Now perform another test and see how the messages change based on the test condition. Notice how the messages appear depending on the current state of the test. Let's play around with the messages a little more. We'll edit the before test message and make it a pop-up message. And we'll add an image to the during test message. Click the preview button to see what the message looks like. Let's now go back to the Perform Test tab and see what the messages look like. 